Okay, problems for classroom discussion. See my biases here. We've got a nice set of John Deere tractors lined up to look at. And we're going to start in this process of actually comparing a mutually exclusive investment, but instead of comparing the red versus the green, which we could do, we're going to compare new versus used. This is a useful exercise, and yes, this is in context of tractors and farming, but this is a concept that every one of you have or will go through in that when you get ready to buy your next truck, are you going to go and take one from the dealer at a marked up price for a brand new? Or are you going to go out and look for one that's used? And how do you figure that out? Other than this is what your parents have always done, so this is what I'm going to do. How do you actually put a pencil to that and figure it out? And that's what we're going to go through now. And this process can be done for a truck or a car or any other type of capital purchase that you go through or that you're thinking about purchasing. And again, we're looking at Mr. Aggierich of Aggierich Farms, and he's looking to purchase or lease a tractor. In this case, we're going to just look and focus at buying a new tractor, or he can buy a used tractor. Later, we'll talk about leasing. We're going to look at part of this chart that has to do with buying a new tractor or buying a used tractor. In terms of the steps of capital budgeting, the first step was looking at alternative investments, right? In this case, our alternative investments that we're looking at is buy a new one, buy a used one, or leasing. What's the next step? We have to collect relevant information. I've collected the relevant information and provided it to you in a chart. And that's something that I strongly recommend that all of you, if you haven't started doing it, begin to do. As you go through this verbiage that's on your assignment, have a little chart like this and read through it, and then you only have to read through it once. Just pull out the data as you read it. Now you have it in this little chart that makes it easy then to do the third step, which is that you've got to lay out the cash flow. And then the fourth step, of course, is to evaluate it. In this case, the purchase price for the new tractor is 30000 The used tractor is 23000 The loan amount, well, we won't worry about the loan amount. Let's go to the operating receipts. Notice that in the operating receipts, I say not applicable. Why? Because I'm making what assumption? That they're the same, so I can ignore them. So it's not relevant to this analysis. The operating expenses for the new is 34000 and the used one is for 3000 Now, some of you NAG systems may jump up and say, you know, typically the used tractor has higher operating expenses because of higher maintenance costs and repairs. And that may be true. But for this particular problem, I have the numbers designed so they work out in a specific way. So look through that. If you want a reason for that, just say it has higher fuel consumption. Notice that the terminal value is we assume that we can sell the new tractor for $4,000 and the used tractor for $1,000. The marginal tax rate is at 25%. The pre-tax discount rate is the same, 12% for each. The life of the new tractor, we're going to keep it for eight years. But for the new tractor, because it's older, we're only going to keep it for five years. And the depreciable life by law is 10% for both of them. To keep this problem simple, we're going to assume that inflation is zero. Okay, so we can focus on the comparison. Stating that inflation is zero simplifies the arithmetic quite a bit, so that's what we're going to do. So you can refer back to the verbiage and this table as we go through this problem. Okay, for the mutually exclusive investment, we're going to calculate the net present value for the new, and then we're going to calculate the net present value for the used tractor. We've already stated that the operating revenues are the same and soon to be common for the new and the used tractor, so we could omit them. And uh, after we calculate the net present value, we're going to calculate the annuity equivalent so that we can determine which is better uh, by comparing those annuity equivalents. We're going to start with the new tractor. And as we said, we're going to calculate the net present value of the new tractor. The third step of capital budgeting is to lay out the cash flows. And we're going to lay out the cash flows using our traditional capital budgeting worksheet where we divide up the net present value into its components. If we look first, uh, we see that if you compare this to your chart, we said that the new tractor was going to cost us $30,000. We also said that the operating 
expenses for the new tractor, again looking back at your chart, is $3,400. To come up with the after tax net returns, we multiply those costs by one minus the tax rate. The 25% tax rate was given, also it's in the table. We do the arithmetic and the after tax net returns, in this case is negative because we've omitted the returns, so we're just looking at the cost. So we can actually say that the after tax cost of uh, operating this new tractor is $25.50 a year. Now for the uh, tax savings from depreciation, we purchased this new tractor for $30,000. You see that the uh, depreciable life was 10, so we can claim $3,000 per year, and uh, we can then multiply that $3,000 depreciation by the tax rate to see that we can save $750 per year. So you'll notice that our tax savings then is $750 per year over that eight year horizon. Now for the uh, after tax terminal value, we plug this into our formula that hopefully you're getting used to now. Our cost was $30,000. Our accumulated depreciation was 24,000, which was the 3,000 times eight. 30,000 minus the 24,000 of accumulated depreciation gives us a tax basis of $6,000. Since we sell it for $4,000, we actually have a capital loss of $2,000, which we multiply by 25%, which reduces our taxes, and that can be added then to the $4,000 that we sold the tractor for. So we actually have a after-tax terminal value of $4,000 plus the $500 in tax savings, which gives us $4,500. Now to calculate the net present value, now we're going to the fourth step of capital budgeting, which is the analysis. If we look at that, we said that it's in your chart. If you look back at your chart, this farmer requires a 12% pre-tax rate of return. We multiply it by one minus the tax rate to get the after-tax discount rate, which is 9%. Then to calculate the net present value, we can see that the $30,000 is already in present terms. We find the present value of the after-tax net returns by recognizing that that's a uniform annuity. So we multiply it by the USPV factor at 9% for eight years. The $750, which is the tax savings from depreciation, is also a uniform annuity. So we multiply it by the same USPV factor and the after-tax terminal value is a lump sum of 4,500, so we use the single sum factor, and that gives us then the uh, present value of each of those components. We add them up, and it comes out to be $37,704. We do the same thing for the used tractor. In this case, the cost of the used tractor is $3,000. So we multiply that by one minus the tax rate, to get the depreciation, the cost was 23000 We divide it by the $10,000 depreciable life, multiply the annual depreciation by the tax rate to give tax savings. We go through the same process in calculating this tax basis. And then because the tax basis is quite a bit higher than what we sell it for, we have a loss. And that $1,000 plus the tax savings gives us a terminal value of $3,625. To calculate the net present value, we go through the same process, and it comes out to a negative $27,159. We have the tractor, new and used, for its net present value. You see that the new tractor has a net present value of a negative $37,704, but that would be its cost. The used has a negative 27,159. Now, which of these would you choose if we based our assumptions on the net present value? Which tractor, based on this net present value, seems to have the lowest cost? The used one. Why could you explain the used one, in this case, having a lower cost than the new one? Okay, the used one, you're only using it for how many years? But the new one, you're using it for eight. So can you actually use the net present value in this case as your decision criterion? 
because the cost on the used is only for five years. If you bought that for used, you still have another three years that you'd have to come up with another piece of equipment. And we haven't accounted for that, so how do we do that? And the way we do that is to annualize the cost so that we're comparing how much is the annual cost in its equivalence. Okay, it's not just uh, trying to come up with a simple average. You're going to find a precise value for the annual cost, and we call that the annuity equivalent. Now remember, to keep this simple, we've assumed inflation to be zero. The uh, discount rate then is already a real rate. You know, if we can get rid of inflation, well, then we don't have to worry about real or nominal. It's all the same. And we're invoking this just to simplify this particular problem. So since the discount rate is already a real rate, we don't have to make any adjustments to the discount rate for this particular problem. Now the annuity equivalent for the new tractor, basically we're going to take the net present value, look back in your notes, and the, the net present value that we calculated for the new tractor was a negative 37,704. We also know that the real rate is 9%, the nominal or the discount rate is 9%. What we're trying to find is the annuity over the life of this new tractor that makes it equivalent to the net present value so that we have an annuity equivalent, equivalent to the net present value. And to calculate that, we can see we can use the present value of a uniform series factor and the present value on the left-hand side, we know it's a 9% discount rate in over eight years. We want to calculate that annuity. And I subscripted E because it's a special case where the present value happens to be the net present value. Thus, we can subscript this E to recognize it as the annuity equivalent. So we plug this into our calculator, 8N, 9% I, the present value is a negative 37,704. Zero out the future value, we're going to calculate the annuity equivalent and it comes out to a negative $6,812. Now how do you interpret that? What is the annualized cost that includes operating cost and capital recovery and opportunity cost to your capital? It includes all of those for you people in ag systems that are always trying to come up with that cost. This is it. This is a precisely calculated cost of what the annualized cost is for running that new tractor. That includes your capital cost, your depreciation, and your operating expenses. Now we can do the same thing for the annuity equivalent for the used tractor, and the only difference that we have the net present value for the used tractor was calculated as 27,159 and its life is over five years. Everything else is the same. The only thing that you have to change in your calculator is the present value, change the N to five, compute the annuity equivalent and it comes out to a negative $6,982. Now make the comparisons. We have the new tractor with its net present value and the annuity equivalent. The used tractor with its net present value and annuity equivalent. We said that if we used erroneously the net present value, we would have chosen the used tractor. But now that we have the annuity equivalents and we account for the difference in life of these two tractors, which one do we correctly choose as the least cost option? Because it has a lower annual cost, right? So we choose the new tractor.